as it, since it's a radio telescope, it observes radio waves. And pulsars gives off radio, rapidly rotating neutron stars gives off radio waves. Um, it can also detect things happening in our ionosphere, right? This is a part in the upper atmosphere that's electrically charged. For generations, humanity has gazed at the stars, trying to find the answers to the age-old question of whether life exists beyond Earth's boundaries. Because of these questions, scientists and astronomers have studied the skies for centuries, and eventually space, too. In all of that exploration, though, we've still been the only life that exists, or so we thought. The Voyager just warned scientists that radio messages were received from deep space, and these messages have changed everything we ever thought about space and who's actually out there. Join us as we dig deeper into what was found and how it might just change the world as we know it. Roll program is in on time. Vehicle response is normal. Voyager 1 is a NASA space probe launched on September 5, 1977, as part of the Voyager program to study the outer solar system and interstellar space beyond the Sun's heliosphere. Voyager 1 was launched 16 days after its twin, Voyager 2. Voyager 1 communicates through NASA's Deep Space Network to receive routine commands and transmit data to Earth. Voyager is situated at a distance of 159.32 AU, 23.834 billion kilometers, from the Earth. This distance makes Voyager 1 the most distant man-made object in space. It is the furthest man-made object from Earth. Voyager 1 has provided crucial data in humans' quest to understand space, especially our solar system. As part of the Voyager program, and like its sister craft, Voyager 2, Voyager 1's mission is to locate and study the regions and boundaries of the outer heliosphere of the Sun. According to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Voyager 1 travels at 38,000 miles per hour across space. Voyager 1 has traveled across space for over four decades, far exceeding its projected time frame in space. The space probe ambles around in space, recording and transmitting information about its travels across space daily. Voyager 1 is said to have enough fuel to sustain its interstellar travel till at least 2025. This means that Voyager may not be taking a bow out of space traveling just yet. By 2025, the spacecraft is expected to have reached about 13.8 billion miles from the Sun. Voyager 1 and its twin craft, Voyager 2, were made similarly. Both spacecraft were geared with 10 unique medical gadgets. These gadgets include television, cameras, infrared and ultraviolet sensors, magnetometers and plasma detectors, cosmic rays, charged particle sensors, and radio for undertaking experiences. Equipped with these gadgets, Voyager 1 has withstood 40,000 miles of Saturn's cloud, while Voyager 2 was given as near 26,000 miles. Saturn is one of the biggest planets in our solar system, second only to Jupiter. It has an orbital duration of 29.5 Earth years. Saturn, however, takes only 10.7 hours to completely rotate on its axis. In May this year, NASA engineers confronted a peculiar problem. Voyager 1 had started sending jumbled and ordinary statistics instead of the telemetry facts that one has come to expect from the space aircraft. Voyager 1 usually provides clean and easily readable data, but the reverse has been the case for some days now. The engineers consider this a major setback that may terminate this mission, even if they don't want to give up on it yet. Voyager 1 has been one of the most successful space missions and giving up on it after all these decades may be equivalent to giving up on an impressive child. However, recent studies published in the space magazine, Nature Astronomy. Very exciting news uh, being published in the Nature, mag Nature magazine. Nature Astronomy. Nature, Nature Astronomy. Astronomy. Reveal that the gadgets on board Voyager 1 have heard the sounds of plasma waves. This is feasible because this spacecraft has successfully traversed three milestones. It has traveled past the threshold of the solar device, through the heliopause, and entered the interstellar medium. Currently, Voyager 2 still has about five functional instruments, while Voyager 1 has only four left. However, both spacecraft are still crucial for gathering valuable data about the events in outer space. 
Before diving fully into the strange messages that Voyager 1 has been transmitting, let's take a look at some of Voyager 1's amazing discoveries. Voyager 1, alongside Voyager 2, was to embark on an interstellar journey and take a closer look at the systems governing Jupiter and Saturn, two of the largest planets in our solar system. Voyager spacecrafts did their job remarkably well, taking images never seen before and gathering an extensive amount of data. These data revolutionized humans' understanding of these mighty planets. After the successful Jupiter and Saturn mission, Voyager 1 bid its twin goodbye and skipped off into interstellar space. Voyager 2, on the other hand, made other stops along our solar system. At an average solar distance of 1.8 billion miles, Uranus is the second outermost planet in our solar system, at least now that Pluto has been kicked to the curb. Uranus is about four times the size of our planet Earth in diameter. It takes the planet about 84 Earth years to complete its orbit around the Sun. Uranus also has one peculiar quality. It appears to be lying on its side. To explain this anomaly, scientists suggest that Uranus must have collided with a large protoplanet earlier, causing the planet to have this odd inclination on its axis. This is, however, an assumption that cannot be verified. No one can tell why Uranus is circling the Sun on its side. It is also believed that the 27 moons orbiting Uranus resulted from the said collision. The moons may have been formed from the debris of the collision. Another topic of interest is the white spot found in Uranus's atmosphere. About 10 years ago, a massive white spot was found in Uranus's atmosphere, thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope. This gigantic white spot turned out to be a massive storm whipping around at up to 89 miles per hour. This storm was found to be larger than the United States. More fascinating is the fact that Uranus's ammonia clouds dropped to sub-zero temperatures of about 323 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, just like Saturn, Uranus has a ring system, except it's not as grand as that of Saturn. In 1846, another planet was added to the star charts of our solar system. This bluish shimmering planet was christened Neptune. Neptune is the outermost planet in our solar system. It used to be the second outermost before Pluto was removed from the list. Neptune is nearly 3 billion miles away from the Sun, making it relatively lonely. Neptune is quite similar in size to its next door neighbor Uranus. Neptune has a diameter of about 31,000 miles. With their similarity in size, one would think that these two planets would be identical in weight, but Neptune considerably beats Uranus in mass. Neptune has a weight approximately 17 times Earth's size, while Uranus is 14.5 times the size of Earth. Neptune has a very slow orbit period due to its long distance from the Sun. It takes about 165 Earth years to complete one revolution around the Sun. To put this in perspective, if Neptune was inhabited like Earth, by the time Neptune civilization celebrates a new year, an entire generation of Earth civilization would have passed away if they all died of natural causes at the highest lifespan that humans can live for. However, Neptune spins rather fast and has a short rotation time. It takes Neptune a mere 16 hours to complete a rotation around its axis. When NASA's Voyager 2 visited the planet in 1989, it made a puzzling weather discovery. Voyager 2 captured bright bands of clouds in the atmosphere, as well as storms that moved at astonishing speeds of about 1,305 miles per hour. You would not want to be caught in a hurricane of that magnitude. Scientists believe that these incredible storms are caused by the solar energy deficiency that Neptune experiences on account of its great distance from the Sun. They also believe that these storm clouds would possibly vanish into thin air someday. In addition to this, at a point during the Voyager 2 missions, scientists discovered the Great Dark Spot. The spot was estimated to be as big as Eurasia. This spot was assumed to be a hole in the planet's visible cloud cover. Then the strangest thing happened. Just a few years after discovering this dark spot, scientists tried to locate it again, but to everyone's amazement, the spot was nowhere to be seen. It was as if it had vanished into thin air, or never even existed. Some theories tried to explain it away, suggesting that the heat from Neptune's core caused turbulence in the atmosphere which tore apart whatever the structure was. Because 
it, it wasn't featureless. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, good, a planet with, with clouds and features. A few years back, the theory was proven to be true with the help of an experiment conducted by some researchers. The team used polystyrene, a plastic made of hydrogen and carbon atoms, to recreate the immense pressure conditions inside the dual ice giants. They proceeded to send two shock waves to see if the hydrocarbon compounds would split under immense pressure. The experiment generated a whooping pressure of 1.5 million bars and raised the temperature to a scorching 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The result? An astonishing shower of tiny glittering diamonds fell from the simulated cloud. Nearly all the carbon atoms had joined to form the tiny crystals that showered in the simulator. The diamonds that would be formed in the atmosphere of Uranus and Neptune would be much bigger as they are produced on a much larger scale and in more definitive conditions. After these diamonds are formed, they sink to their planet's core over thousands of years. Just imagine millions of years' worth of diamonds lying beneath the planet's core. The thought of diamonds falling as rain somewhere in the cosmos is just mind-blowing. Diamonds have always fascinated humankind. And according to myths, when these precious stones were first found, they were thought to be... This phenomenon adds to the intrigue surrounding these ice giants. Over the past decades, the two probes in the form of Voyager 1 and 2 have ventured into a vast and rather mysterious region known as the interstellar medium. The interstellar medium is the space between stars, which is sparsely populated. Even in these regions with sparse populations, many amazing discoveries are still being made. One such discovery is the strength and direction of the interstellar magnetic field. This discovery has sparked heated debates within the science communities about the shape and activity of the sun's magnetic domain the heliosphere. The heliosphere was initially thought to be shaped somewhat like a comet. Now scientists believe it is shaped more like a sphere. In case you have ever wondered what happens to the heliosphere when sunspots appear and disappear, our trusty space probes have provided an answer to this question. When the solar wind, which is a flow of charged particles emanating from the sun, comes to a halt, it signifies the start of the interstellar medium. The ionized gas, or plasma, can be likened to a rock in a river, pushing against the cooler, more dense plasma flowing around it. The sun cavity that forms is called the heliosphere, and the edge is called the heliopause, as in where the sphere pauses. This is similar to how the top of the Earth's troposphere is called the tropopause. Don Gurnett, a University of Iowa researcher who worked on the Voyager mission, said that when the spacecraft launched, there was no concrete knowledge as to how far the heliosphere extended. Voyager 2 reached another significant milestone. It successfully crossed the heliopause. This time, there was no discrepancy as its plasma instrument was still functioning optimally. Hence, it was able to record a significant increase in particle density. Voyager 1 continues to transmit data frequently and appears to be in good shape. However, it is possible that the spacecraft developed what is known as electronic aphasia, which impairs its ability to transmit fluently. Scientists have studied the issue critically and thankfully have found a way to mitigate it. Voyager 1 has been a true pioneer in space exploration. This revolutionary spacecraft has braved areas outside our sun's magnetic field 